Ooh. I gotta tell you, it's crazy out there. That virus going around and everybody's in quarantine. Nature's taking things back in a big way. So, I just came out of the wilds where there are no humans walking around at all. And I saw the craziest animal that I just gotta draw. It was a hippo dragon. And that's what we're gonna draw today. So let's get, yeah, let's get all of our gear off. Okay, so I'm gonna get my art supplies together. You get your art supplies together. I'm gonna show you how to draw the craziest hippo dragon I've ever seen. This guy was huge. Okay, let's get our gear together. There's my sketchbook. Get your sketchbook out. I'm gonna search this little bag here. This is how where I keep all my pencils. Um, so I'm just searching for the pencil that I want to use. Where is it? There it is. Look at that. This is my pencil that has blue lead in it. So let me show you how I started. First off, I decided to, to just do some quick little drawings that are called thumbnails to get kind of the to kind of capture how I remember seeing this thing as it ripped up out of the, the marsh and threatened me. So, um, yeah, so this is the one I liked. Uh, it, I like the, the, the gesture, the, the movement of it, how it looks like it's kind of roaring up on its hind legs. And so these only took me like maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, this is all, this is what I'm going to base off of. Now, instead of, um, pulling in a bunch of reference um, and stuff like that from Google, I'm going to draw more from my memory. Um, as you can see, I'm just kind of showing you my, my blue lead here that's in this pencil. So, all right, let's get started drawing. Here I am. Uh, I'm going to focus on, on the big shapes first. Now, this is sped up just a little bit. I don't normally draw that fast in real life so <laughs> okay um, yeah so right now as you can see I'm just sort of trying to figure out the, the proportions as I remember them the the muzzle the nose the snout if you will of this hippo dragon that I'm looking at is big it's bulbous it holds a lot of teeth and one thing to keep in mind when you're drawing this sort of thing is even the, the facial features have a perspective to them. So you want to keep all the lines of the mouth going in the same direction. That's important. Otherwise, it looks kind of goofy. Next, you can see I'm building up the shapes. I'm just trying to keep it as general as possible. I'm using uh, ovals. I'm using circles. Using lines that overlap each other. Uh, because this thing has a lot of fat on it, you know, it's got rolls, it's got big, thick skin, and it's, it's got some weight to it. So the way to, to really show the weight is to have overlapping folds and flaps of skin. So I'm putting in a lot of folds there under the legs and under... Yeah, under its body there. I'm gonna draw in the second leg, draw in its little feet. Going back, looking at my little thumbnail for reference, and I'm just kind of expanding on what I had already drawn. And that way, I'm not uh, relying on uh, reference of a hippo, because I want this to have a little bit more personality and to look like uh, what I saw out in the wild. And I'm not really going to spend a lot of time uh, on the details. I'm just trying to figure out the shape, the body proportions, things like that. Uh, where the teeth are going to go, where its claws, where its tail is going to go. So I probably, you know, 
you can spend as much time on this phase or as little time as you want. I was trying to do it pretty quick, so maybe half an hour on this portion of the drawing. There we go, kind of figuring out some cool fangs for this thing. I mean, you know, being a dragon, dragons have big fangs. Being a hippo, hippos have big teeth. Although I think technically, if you want to get, you know, technical, they're called tusks. I'll have to look that up. Okay, so now the next step is to just kind of, I pulled in some, some pictures of hippos off of Google. And what I'm doing is, um, I'm just drawing from those, just trying to do some quick, quick drawing. Uh, that way I can familiarize myself with the, the, the proportions and what a hippo looks like, you know, because uh, drawing from memory can really only get you so far, so it's really good to, to just do some quick reference studies. So I was just, you know, drawing kind of fast, looking at the hippos, Seeing what they're doing, found some good images. Like I love this one where he's just kind of trotting along, like doo -doo 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 -doo. kind of focusing on what the feet look like, what its nose, what its head looks like. And there we go. Let's get a close up of kind of what my layout looks like. As you can see, I wasn't totally, you know, set on one foot style. I changed it. You know, these don't have to be perfect. You know, none of this portion of the drawing needs to be perfect. This is where you're exploring and just kind of being loose and crazy and having some fun with it. I'm gonna pull out some of my other pencils. This is a .9. I don't think I'm gonna use that right now. Got my .5 pencil. A couple of different .5 pencils that I'll probably be using. I think I'll go with this one. This is a brand new one. And what I'm doing is I'm going to switch out my 2B lead and I'm going to put in a much harder lead. It's a 6H. And this is the paper I'm using. It's a Strathmore. It's a 400 weight or 400 series and um, kind of a, a cool Bristol board texture. So now I'm going to just start laying out my big shapes. Got a little bit of reference there on my computer screen. And, but mostly I'm going to be drawing from my little thumbnail that I did and then the, the drawing I did with the blue pencil. Now what's great about using um, the 6H lead is that lets me draw real light like you cannot make a dark line with a 6h lead <laughs> like you just you can't it's pretty much impossible figuring out like the shoulder muscles again I'm looking at at my, my big shapes you know so uh, you just you know just keep it loose at this point you know you just want to have some fun because you know we're not putting in detail just yet. All the detail comes later. So, fun fact. Hippos are not cute, cuddly animals all the time. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think they're pretty fun looking. And I wouldn't mind petting one someday. But man, I have heard some stories and I did got distracted when I was looking up some reference and these things yeah they're they're a dangerous animal they're in the top 20 dangerous animals they just they're they're aggressive and they'll flip over boats and they've been known to be able to bite crocodiles like they'll take on a crocodile I wouldn't want to take on a crocodile 
which is why I was thinking like, you know, what's, I don't want to mess with this thing that I saw because it's a dragon and a hippo. Super scary. Putting in some shading, kind of figuring out my lighting. Figuring out some claws, and how its paws work. switching leads. Now this pencil, uh, I like to keep a different hardness of leads in my different mechanical pencils. So this one is like more of a, a 2B, if I remember right. And what that allows me to do is start, well, now that I got, you know, the 6H putting in the real light lines, now I can put in the dark lines. Oh yeah, look at those teeth. Big old chompers, man. They're like, they're like broadswords. Are so big. Really see the uh, things starting to take shape there. Look at that. Now, when you look at you know the reference, or when you look at animals, like if you got a dog or a cat, you peel back its lips, and you can see its big fangs you'll notice that they sort of just kind of come up out of the gum. So you don't want to just draw them sitting there like they're just kind of stuck in the gums. You want to have some, you know, fold the gums around them. Make, put little lines, put a little detail. And still remember at this point, you know, anything can change. Uh, you might want to change the, the way the the fangs look or how the mouth opens also at this point I set up a timer before I got you know got too far into this section of the of the drawing and I really only wanted to spend about an hour and a half on my drawing a little erasing shimmy 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 erase 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 flick 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 switch pencils a little bit now, what, what I switched to there for, well, for a brief second, was uh, my lead holder. Now, this is a 0.9, and I have a, a softer lead in there. So, in case you don't know, the lead of a pencil is turned into, is classified in a couple of different ways. You have, on the hardness scale, you are... Your harder leads are designated with an H, probably for hard. That would be my guess. Now, um, that being said, your hardnesses go up to usually like a 6H, and that's really hard. I think I've seen as hard as 8H, and that's like... I mean that that that's like trying to draw with a, a piece of metal almost. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's gonna leave a really faint line, and it could even scratch your paper. And then on the other end of things, you got your B, you got your H, which is not too hard. Then you got your HB, which is kind of transitioning into being a little softer. And then you got a B, and there's no one B. That's just B. Then there's two B all the way up to, to 6 or 8B. And the softer, the higher the letter B, the softer the lead is. And the softer the lead means that you can do some really dark lines. So that's why with this pencil that I'm using now and my 0.9 millimeter pencil, I like keeping it at like a 2B or an HB. Your number two pencils, those yellow ones that you use for school, those are a 2B pencil. 
to be or not to be a pencil. And so those, those will give you a nice, solid, dark line. That's why, you know, you use them for tests or, or writing in school, and they're real easy to erase. All right, you see how uh, my lines are coming together? He's starting to look like he's got some, like, you know, he might have been eating too many mangoes or, you know, I really don't know what a, a hippo dragon eats. How about you guys tell me in the in the comments what you think this monster will eat? And the point nine lead at this point, because you can get just kind of get some nice thick black, uh, not even really too thick, but just some dark line work. Really get the, the your lines to pop. Man, a little shading here. Going back to the point five, erasing out, fixing some problems with the teeth. Feel like a uh, a hippo doctor, not doctor. What are the what are the guys that did teeth? Oh, dentist. Yeah, I knew that. And uh, yeah, just kind of figuring out, like you know, you, the the mouth kind of it goes back into the head, so you gotta make sure to draw that in there. Give it a real sense that it's got a skull under all those those rolls and that muscle. Putting in some details now, adding some extra folds under the neck, pooching it out. Just kind of really trying to keep conscious of the fact that this has has mass, that it has form, that there's muscles. You know, there's parts that come forward, and that's why you have overlapping shapes. Just playing around with the shadows a little bit. Shadows would be going, shading just a touch. Now, if you're gonna color this with watercolor or color it digitally, uh, you know, after you scan it in or take a picture of it, you may not want to do this much shading. I wasn't really planning on coloring this. Um, I might in the future, but the adding in a lot of shading with the pencil can make the coloring part of the process go a little bit longer, take a little bit more time, because you're, you know, really you want to let the, the coloring, the, the program that you use, whether it's Photoshop or Procreate or, or even, you know, watercolor if you're doing it traditionally, it's better to let, let your colors do the shading. Uh, you know, it just, it's just easier. So at this point in the drawing, I was really trying to figure out what to do with that back arm. Uh, how to make it look like it was still attached to the body without getting any kind of weird points or like a claws touching the, the thing. And yeah, it just little things you gotta keep in mind, uh, but still wanting to have it look cool and look the same as the other hand. You know, you don't want to draw two different kinds of hands on on something like this. Unless, of course, it's a zombie and it has been sewn together from other parts of other animals, kind of Frankenstein style. So, you know, that's an option. Uh, but not with this guy. This guy is just, he's a natural born, free range hippo dragon. Drawing in some claws, adding some more eye details to get that to really pop. As they say, eyes are the windows to the soul. Busting out the nine millimeter, ka-chow. Doing some shading. Uh, this kind of shading that I'm doing here is um, fairly solid, but I also was mixing in a little bit of what's called cross hatching where you just do lines and you don't make a solid gradient and it can help add texture and form to your drawing to do some cross hatching I'm gonna do a video uh, in the future maybe next week maybe in the week after about the different kinds of shading that you can do with a pencil because I'm using all kinds of shading with this I'm rendering I'm doing some gradation I can 
do some chiaroscuro shading. Oh yeah, God, I mean, this is a dragon. You gotta have a little bit of smoke or steam coming out of those nostrils. And some more shading, because I, I want the mouth to stick, to look like it's coming forward. And so to do that, I'm gonna play with my values. So my, the inside of the mouth is gonna be a little bit lighter than maybe it naturally would. And I'll make the arm behind it a little darker and that'll help the, the mouth look like it's kind of coming forward because you know that's really the business end of this thing is you know that mouth with those huge fangs and I want that to really look like it's coming forward and one trying to bite you putting in lots of little details this is where you know you can have some fun and you know put in like little chin hairs pimples or you know whatever your little gross details that you know you want to put on a dragon uh, I'm kind of thinking about where the lights coming from and if there's gonna you know these things stick out in front of the, the lips so it's gonna cast some shadows down over the lips you know little details like that really help sell this thing as you know I saw this in the wilderness now, of course, I'm not putting details where I don't need to. Wait, does that make sense? I'm not putting any details in places that I don't need to. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, what that means is I'm only putting, I'm putting the most details where I want you to look. I want you to look at the mouth. I want you to look at the fangs. I want you to look at the eyes. And so that's where my details going. And that way, you don't have to put as much detail in places you don't want people to spend a lot of time looking. Like in the armpit. Why would I want you to look at the armpit? That's a very good question. So, uh, you know, I don't want you to really spend a lot of time looking at the tail. Although tails can look really cool. Have you looked at a crocodile tail? They have spikes and ridges and they look really prehistoric. I mean, they're basically dinosaurs. I mean, come on. They're dinosaurs, so they have really cool tails. But when you're when you got something running at you like this, you don't want to have people looking at the tail, not right away. You want them to look at that scary jaw and all the the cool details. You know, you might even uh, if I go if I visit this again, I might even put in some like spit coming out, make it just look kind of juicy gross because <laughs> you know it's a monster it's not supposed to be super pretty figuring out some folds of the legs making the hand darker so the it brings it forward in front of the, the tail better so those don't blend together add some more details details help bring stuff forward so another thing you know just really keep it in mind your values and how they your values uh, your shadows and the highlights interact with each other now we're almost done with the drawing just another minute or two I just wanted to thank you guys for hanging in here and watching me do this cool drawing of this super cool animal and like I said I want to see what you guys draw I want to see what you come up with what crazy animals can you find can you draw and so, tag me, uh, find me on Instagram. Like I said at the beginning, uh, Instagram is the Tyler Wolf. You'll find me on Instagram. You can tag me. Oh, here we go. Time for a close-up. Zooming in. It's coming. All right, guys. Keep drawing. Keep it real. And see you next time.